Hi, I am Nick Shell, a certified Enneagram coach. Gonna be talking about some things I've learned from this book, which is The Honest Enneagram by Sarah Jane Case. If you'd like to purchase this book as I have, you can click the link right there. It takes you to Amazon. You can buy it cheaper than I paid for it. If you wanna become certified for Enneagram like I have and four other of my viewers who click that link right there, you can do that. Or if you are so new to this concept, you're thinking, what's Enneagram? Yeah, click another link right there. I put on there for you to take the test for free. There's a good chance you can figure out who you are. It takes about 10 minutes. So what I want to address in this, you know, there, there, all of us have these certain memories from our, from our childhood that for some reason we still remember. They shaped us, whether we realize it or not, and it may just seem random. And I'm thinking maybe it's not so random after all. So this is uh, a true story. It took place in the summer of 1988, and it's totally shaped who I am and who I became at that point. So summer of 1988, I was like, I think it was like the summer after first grade for me. And we found out in our town that there was this lady that was giving away kittens. And you know, my sister and I, we never owned a cat before. So my mom said, you both can pick out your own kitten and you can both have your own pet. So this is very exciting. So uh, we go to this lady's house. And I remember like we walked in her house, kind of like in her kitchen on the floor. There's the box of the mommy, mommy cat or whatever, and you know, six or seven kittens. Now, in my mind, keep in mind, I'm probably older than you. In the 80s, it was something called Morris the Cat. He was like the, he was like the spokesman for like Nine Lives Cat Food, one of those companies, cat food. And he was this talking cat. You can even Google this. He even quote ran for president in 1988. I'm not kidding. I used to have a pen of it. So Morris the Cat, and he was an orange cat. And I also love Garfield. I had a stuffed animal. Was one of my favorites. Garfield. So this idea of, I want an orange cat. Well, you better believe it. We get there and there is an orange kitten. So immediately I crouch down and I go to try to, you know, get the orange kitten. And it just kind of does a, and it just kind of like backs away from me. And I kept trying to get this orange kitten and it didn't want anything to do with me. Meanwhile, my mom being very perceptive, saw that while I was chasing that one cat, there was a cat chasing me that I was ignoring. To which my mom said, Nick, choose the cat that comes to you. And then I saw this cat that was half brown, half white, spotted. And it really was making its best effort to get to me, but I wouldn't even look at it until she said it. Then I realized it. And as you can imagine, the story ends. Forget the orange cat. Never looked at it again. I ended up taking home the brown and the white cat. Why? Because it came to me. It wanted me. And so that was such a important story that would shape my whole life. And I, I really have carried that with me because that's how it is with people. Certain people don't really want you in their life for whatever reason. You can do everything right and they still don't want you in their life. The feeling is not mutual. And I think we've all been rejected by people throughout our life continually. And a lot of times it's confusing. Why doesn't that person like me? I'm, I'm, I'm a likable person, right? I'm nice to them, right? You, you're never gonna know. Usually you'll never know why certain people don't want you around or want you in their social circle, whatever it is. But the important thing is there, for that one person that doesn't really want you around, there are probably at least 10 people who do. And out of those 10, probably three that really want you in their life. And it's a matter of looking for those people, those brown and white cats, as opposed to the orange cat. I deal with this every day of my life. I, 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 I see how certain relationships stick and others do not. And so I'm talking about this because I am Enneagram six wing seven, the sexual subtype, which is focused on those relationships, building those one to one. And it's very important for me that I you know, have good time management skills. Well, I don't want to waste my time on anybody in my life that doesn't want me there. And one of my own rules is if someone's playing on their phone while I'm right there trying to have a conversation with them, I basically draw a line like, okay, that's somebody I don't need in my life because I, I want to be able to build relationships with people again, but that's my subtype, the sexual subtype or one-to-one. -one. That's what that is, is all about. But just like the mafia and my mom halfway jokingly tells us that we do have uh, ties to the mafia in Chicago because my Italian grandfather ended up, you know, going up there. So it's easy to believe, but that's how I've always operated. I always think it's, it's pretty easy for me to like a person. Like I don't really have a lot of known enemies, if any. 
And, and, and I'm not the kind of person to just not like people. But if I can't trust a person, that's different. It's not a matter of me liking you or not. It's just, okay, you're out of the circle of trust, like Robert De Niro says in, in Meet the Parents. To me, that's what it's about. Can I trust you or, or not? Are you serving in, in my social network that I'm building out of security or not? Now I understand that's how I operate. Even for my career, I'm a recruiter. So I'm looking to fill these job openings. And I'm sizing them up from the very beginning. Can I trust this person to do the paperwork and do the drug screen or are they wasting my time? That's always what I'm looking for. You know why? Because ultimately a six is looking for security. Yes, the self-preservation is more about their physical security, but for a lot of social sixes, or for me, the sexual six, the self or the one-to-one, -one, we find security through our relationships and through our social network. That's where we find that. So it makes a lot of sense. Going back to the whole cat, my mom taught me in the summer of 1988 how to, and she is a 6'2", she's actually, she's the self-preservation, but she taught me this. I had a 6 mom and now, and, and I'm a 6, and she taught me that from the very beginning. Don't waste your time on people who don't want you, don't need you. And that's okay, it's nothing, I mean, maybe it is something personal, but you may never know it. For me, I'm always focused on improving myself the best I can. Of course, that only helps my odds of being in more social networks and, and being of service to other people and them being of service to me. So that's definitely very important. But I'm not the kind of person who chases people if they, if, if they don't want me. And now I understand that. But it's because of my mom teaching me to start trying to chase the orange cat and instead that, that brown and white one. So I just think that's so interesting of a story. And, I, and I, I've, I've been telling this story to everybody in my life that I know, it, it, that story always surfaces itself. I think what would be cool if you want to, you could leave a comment and maybe you could share a story with me uh, from your childhood. That you, it's like, why do I even remember this? Is that really that big of a memory? It's not like it was super dramatic. It's not like it was traumatic. Why would I remember that cat story? Well, I think now that I understand Enneagram better, if I were to go back through all these random memories I have, these stories that, why do I remember that? It's probably related to my core values for my Enneagram type finding security. And even now I'm thinking about it for the first time. I wanted ultimately this one cat to love me and it didn't. And that wouldn't have been secure. My mom perceived that. But this cat would have a better relationship with me because it actually was, was attracted to me and it saw security in me that I was trying to provide for the other that didn't want it. And that's a perfect allegory, right? Of how we have relationships with other people and we find that security. You wanna share a story like that? Maybe I can help you figure it out from an Enneagram perspective. Your comments belong right here.